Hi everyone! In this video we are going to build this powerful LED light using a high quality Cobb LED and a power supply unit from an old computer. This is a highly versatile LED light due to the brightness adjustment knob and the option to mount a softbox for more pleasant lighting. Since the Cobb LED that is used for the light has a really high CRI rating of over 97 and a color temperature of daylight, it almost matches the sunlight and produces true colors unlike my previously used cheap LED bulbs. So the first thing we'll need is a power supply unit. I got mine from an old computer that wasn't functioning properly. Since we'll only need the outer case, it is best to use a non-working one. I also recommend you use a power supply unit that has ventilation holes on the sides and a hole for the fan to allow for as much air movement as possible. After removing the top cover, I unscrew the AC port and remove the main switch together with the power supply board. I wanted to remove the labels of the case, so I tried heating them slightly with a hot air blower, but that didn't help much. Using some WD-40 and a plastic card, I managed to remove the labels without scratching the case too much. To be able to mount the light on a stand, we will need this light mount adapter. To mount this adapter to the case, we remove the top part, which is held in by four screws. By carefully aligning the mount on the bottom side of the case, we can mark the position of the screws and drill them out using a 3mm drill bit. To power the LED, I am using this DC 24 volt power supply that can deliver up to 6 amps. I will be mounting it on the bottom of the case as I did with the light mount. Using a center punch, I mark the screw holes and drill them out. Since the LED that I will be using works from 34 volts, we will need this voltage booster module to supply the required voltage to it. The two blue variable resistors on the board adjust the current and voltage on the output leads. We will be dealing with them a bit later. Now I mark the screw holes of the module and also one extra hole for a potentiometer that will be mounted later. Again using a 3mm drill bit for the module and a 6.5mm bit for the potentiometer. Now I place a mark slightly above the center on the front of the case where the LED will be mounted and move on to the cooling part of the build. Since the LED produces quite a lot of heat at full power, I will be using this aluminium cooler with a fan to keep the LED at a lower temperature. I chose this AMD cooler used for computer CPUs since it is relatively small and quiet and will fit inside the case perfectly. I measured the distance between the mounting screws and using a bit of tape to protect the case, I marked the screw hole locations on the tape by using some pressure on the screws. To be able to mount a softbox on the light, we will need this Bowens mount which is held in by a few screws on this adapter. After it is removed, the screw holes are once again marked and drilled out with a 3mm drill bit and a larger hole at the center where the LED will go through. Now using a large 68mm hole saw, I carefully drill out the center. This will leave quite a sharp edge around the hole, so I trim it off with a knife and use some sandpaper to round off the edge.
We can now remove the fan from the cooler and wipe off the factory thermal paste off of the aluminum radiator so we can mount the LED onto it. The LED that I chose for this project was supplied by a store on AliExpress which specializes in high quality cob LEDs and LED strips. They provide great prices and global shipping. So the LED that I am using is this ultra bright 100 watt daylight white cob LED that has a color rendering index of over 97, meaning the colors that are produced by this light are very accurate and almost identical to sunlight. The link to this LED is in the description of the video. The light comes with a plastic mount and as you can see the LED is relatively small but incredibly powerful for its size. The holes for mounting the LED can now be drilled on the cooler. It is best if you drill and tap the holes to an M3 thread, but I will be using these larger screws instead. Unfortunately, two of the bolts broke off, so I had to relocate the new holes on the radiator. It doesn't look great, but will do the job of keeping the LED in place. We can now solder the power leads to the LED and apply a layer of thermal paste on the backside, making sure to spread it out evenly. The plastic ring can now be placed on top to hold the LED securely on the radiator. Moving on to the voltage booster, we need to remove the white glue first so we can get to the pins of the innermost variable resistor. Take your time and do this carefully since we don't want to accidentally remove any smaller components in the way. Once the glue surrounding it is removed, we can desolder the resistor and solder two wires on the outermost pads in place of the resistor. We will now need two variable resistors and a linear potentiometer, all with a value of 2 kilo ohms, and solder them to the voltage booster as shown in the wiring diagram. We can now take the resistor that is wired in series with the potentiometer and mark a letter S on it. We do the same to the other resistor which is wired in parallel and mark a letter P on it. This will later help us determine which resistor is wired in series and which one in parallel. Snipping off the necessary legs of the resistors and gluing them together makes the wiring nice and tidy. Since we are using a fan for cooling the LED, we will need the small controller which can adjust the speed of the fan based on temperature. Since it is powered by 12 volts, a small step-down converter will be needed to drop the voltage of the power supply. To do that, we need to connect the voltage booster to the step-down converter and turn the small potentiometer until the voltage reading shows 12 volts on the output of the step-down converter. The fan speed controller can now be safely connected. We now need to attach the temperature sensor close to the LED. Here I am using a bit of temperature conductive glue. Once the glue is set, the fan can be placed back on the radiator and connected to the controller together with the temperature sensor. We can now power on our circuit and see the fan spin for the first time. Now using the small button on the fan speed controller, we set the maximum speed of the fan by clicking once every second or so until the LEDs on the board start flashing. 
After 20 seconds, the settings are saved and we can now adjust the minimum speed by double clicking until the LEDs start flashing. To access the temperature settings, we press and hold the button for a few seconds and set the temperature to 35 degrees according to the second column. To move to the third column, we press and hold the button again and set it at 10 degrees. This means that the fan will start spinning faster once the sensor reads 35 degrees and will be spinning at maximum speed when the temperature reaches 45 degrees, in turn cooling the LED more efficiently. We now need to turn the variable resistor on the booster module clockwise until we hear a click on each turn, meaning it has reached its limit. We do the same to the parallel and series resistors we marked earlier, but instead we need to turn them anti-clockwise. We can now temporarily connect the LED to its power source through a multimeter to measure the current that is flowing through. Before we light the LED for the first time, it is important to carefully remove the protective plastic first. We now turn the potentiometer fully clockwise and the variable resistor on the boost module anti-clockwise until the multimeter shows a reading of just below 2.7 amps, which is what the LED is rated at. You will see the LED slowly increasing in brightness as we do this until it reaches its maximum which is super bright. We now need to leave the LED running at its maximum power with the fan on for at least 5 minutes and monitor the amps on the multimeter so that it does not reach more than 2.7 amps since the current draw will slightly increase due to the LED getting hotter. With the main potentiometer still in its fully clockwise position, we can take the series resistor and slowly turn it clockwise until we see a drop in the current reading. Backtrack slightly until the reading just barely levels off. We can now turn the potentiometer anti-clockwise and turning the parallel variable resistor clockwise, we will see the LED starting to dim. This is where the lowest brightness is set to your preference so that the LED dims properly using the brightness knob. Now the LED brightness can be adjusted conveniently by turning the potentiometer. We can now move on to assembling the light. I insert and connect the main switch and the ground cable. The LED power leads can now be soldered to the boost module with some heat shrink tubing added over it. The boost module can now be screwed to the case together with the fan and LED assembly. I use a few pieces of double-sided tape to attach the fan speed controller to the case. The potentiometer can now be mounted, making this a convenient brightness knob. With a balance mount adapter in place, one side of the case is completed. The light mount is now screwed in following with the power supply, making sure to use spacers on each screw to allow for an air gap between the case and the power supply. I now use a piece of steel mesh as a protective grill.
And finally, the power supply unit can be connected to the boost module and the AC input accordingly, making sure all connections are secure. The case can now be put back together with the four screws holding it. I add this plastic knob and the light is now completed. And I actually built two of these lights. As you can see, the light is incredibly bright and gives off a color temperature similar to daylight. And once the LED warms up, we can see the fan spinning at maximum speed but still barely making any noise. To make the light softer, I will be using this foldable softbox with a Bowens mount which can be assembled in under a minute. The included cloth will make the light much softer. Since we are using this high quality LED, the objects look as if they were lit by daylight, making this a great studio light for filming or photography because of the great color rendition. It also does not flicker on camera unlike my previously used cheap LED bulb light as seen in the comparison. Overall, I'm really happy the way these lights turned out and I hope you give this build a try. Feel free to leave any comments below and I'll see you on the next video.